What's up, everybody? This is Naruto DND character creation. This is a video that's been requested more than once, so I figure it's about time that we finally get to it. So, if you haven't figured it out, that's exactly what we're doing creating a character in Naruto DND following the basic rules. So, let's hop into it. So, there are a few things that you'll need for this uh, three pages primarily. You'll need the Naruto D20 Scrolls of Knowledge, which is just the Naruto rulebook. You'll need the Naruto character sheet, and this last one's optional. You'll need the Modern D20 Roleplaying Guide, um, because that's what Naruto is based off of. But before we get into the complex stuff, let's go to where it's simple. Character creation is summed up here starting in page 38 of the Naruto book. Um, and here are the steps, as you can see. First step, ask your GM. If there are any things that are okay or not okay, your GM needs to, uh, you know, make it clear and discuss it with them. Make sure that everything's alright. Then the first step to actually creating your character is the ability score. Now ability score, if you aren't aware, determines the core stats. Your strength, your dexterity, your constitution, your intelligence, your wisdom, and your charisma. And those are basically summed up as strength being obviously strength. Dexterity is your ability to maneuver and dodge. Constitution is just your natural survivability. Intelligence is your book smarts. Wisdom is your street smarts. And charisma is your charm and ability to speak. So depending on what your DM will prefer, on what your GM will prefer, you will either do a point by system or you'll roll the dice. Um, point by system is as it says right there. Each ability starts at a score of eight. Uh, so, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to not highlight that. Um, and then you may purchase the ability scores, and you have a total of thirty-six points. Now, what I typically like to do is just open up a little bit of a notepad. Because keeping track of the points can be a bit of a pain in the ass. For the sake of this guide, let's keep it simple. Let's just work towards making Naruto. So here's some things, obviously, that Naruto's strong in. His strength. Got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of ability to dodge there. He's very constitutional. Very, has a whole lot of survivability. Not that smart. Not that wise. And his charisma's, you know, it's pretty good. So we have 36 points. And the way I always keep track of it is I just have, I go stat by stat. So Naruto, for his strength, let's say it's above average. And I'd go 16. Now what that does is from 8 to 14 cost 1 point. Meaning it will take 6 points for strength to get to 14, and then another two points for 15, and another two points for 16, because it gets up to that. <clears throat> so as a result, that's minus 6 from 8 to 14, and then minus 4 from 14 to 16. As a result, you have already lost a net of negative 10 on your strength. And that leaves you with 26 remaining. Now, dexterity, I'd say he's not suffering from his dexterity. He's pretty base on it. Uh, let's just up it by two. So minus two points, get that to a 10. Sorry, it takes a second to update there. And now, down to 24 points. Now, constitution. This is his big one. I would go to 18 for Naruto. So that is minus 6 for 8 to 14, minus 4 from 14 to 16, and then this one gets another minus 6 from uh, from 16 to 18, because at 17 and 18, they both cost 3 points. So as a result, that's a total of negative 16, leaving him with only 8 points to go. Now intelligence, I think keeping that at negative 1 is perfectly fitting for Naruto. As a matter of fact, I think keeping his wisdom at negative one is also pretty fitting. But his charisma is also a little bit up there. So we're going to remove minus six. 
<clears throat> so we're going to remove 6 from his points to get it from 8 to 14, and then give him a little bit of a boost, and take another minus 2 for his remaining points, and get him to 15. Oh, sorry, I didn't upgrade this constitution there. So that goes up to 18. And then that will be brought up to 15. And it's always good to double check your math there. It can be confusing, especially your first time doing it. But after you get it the first time, you're pretty much good. So that's our base layout for Naruto. 16, 10, 18, 8, 8, 15. Of course, you might have your own difference of opinion on what his stats look like, but this is what I'm going off of. Um, now, alternatively, you could roll the die. Now, this is simple. You roll 46, and then you pick the best three. Now, I'm not going to do add that for the sake of this character creation, but I will show you what that would look like. So I will open up a roll d20 page here, the old one that we would use for Naruto d20 while we were still recording it. I'll pull up a notepad. Keep that same one, and so, slash roll, 46, and you take the best three, so that is 6, 6, and 2, and that makes it 14. And you'll do this six times. Best three, that one, 13. That's 5, 4, and 3, which is 12. Six, four, and three, which is thirteen. Six, four, and three, which is, of course, thirteen. And one more. Four, four, and six, which is fourteen. Doing the forty-six tends to give you a more balanced character. Um, as well as if you like a little bit of randomness, the rolling is definitely preferable. Um, but if you're going for a more heroic type of D and D. Um, this is more a message for the D for the GMs. Um, I say go with the point by system, especially for Naruto. Being able to build yourself directly into what you're going for, or di into directly what you want, is much easier. So, race is your character a normal human? Blah 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 blah. Now, for the sake of Naruto, it's almost always normal human, right? You're gonna you want to be from a village. You don't want to be a freak. Well, maybe you do. But that's all covered in chapter two. There it is, Shinobi Species. And, of course, this covers all the little details, but the races are gigantic, which is just you're a giant. A human, basic human. Uh, human Earth, Human Fire, Human Lightning, Human Water, Human Wind. Monstrous, which is you've got deformities, maybe your Orochimaru experiment, who knows. Um, a small folk, which you're just super, super tiny. Or... A true-blooded human, which is you're pretty much bred for a specific purpose, and whereas you do take some disadvantages from that, it you could argue it pays off. Now, a few things to keep in mind is a level adjustment. Essentially, what a level adjustment is, as you see right there, um, I think the only two of the races, maybe three of them. There's monstrous, true-blooded, and I think gigantic. Um, those will inhibit you by making it so that way you cannot hit the maximum level. Depending on your campaign type, this will be a very small issue or a very big issue. For example, in the campaign that I'm doing on this channel, um, it's really not a big issue because I just said, screw it, who needs that? But it is there for balancing reason. Um, as a result, let's say you're a giant. That means the maximum level you could hit through a non-epic campaign is level 18 as opposed to 20. Um, so that's worth keeping in mind. Double check with your GM to make sure whether or not you're following those rules. Um, yeah. So for the sake of Naruto, he, while he is a human from the land of fire, these come with a few things that don't quite work for him. His elemental affinity would be fire following that. So to avoid that, while also following kind of the rules is how it's described in here, humans native from the land of Earth, for example, we're just going to give him a base human race. Oh, let me actually put in these details here. Naruto Uzumaki, player Connor. 
And there's no place where you actually mark their race, so no need to worry about that. But you will choose it because it will have some of the starting important details for your character. So you start off as a size medium. There's nothing special one way or another for that. Your base speed is 30 feet, so 30. You gain four more skill points at the first level and one more for every level thereafter. So depending on whether you're doing this on paper or whether you're doing it through a PDF format like I am, there are a few ways that you can always keep track of that. Uh, for example, I do it with sticky notes. If you saw some of uh, the pages, specifically Mike's, throughout the campaign uh, when we were doing this on our YouTube channel, his was littered with sticky notes. And for some of my more special characters, like Awari, uh, his was as well. And so I just put human plus four at level one plus one every level. And that's just to help me keep yeah you know, keep in mind exactly where I'm at. And it's good to do that so that way if the GM is a stickler, you know exactly where all your points are coming from and you're not getting shortchanged just because you forgot about one little thing from your race. Um, now we'll go into actually applying the skill ranks here later. So first thing, back to race, bonus feet. You get a, f a simple feat here at level one. Sorry about that pop-up there. Clicked the wrong button. So you get the simple weapons proficiency feat. Now that basically means that you get a couple of things, and this is when the modern D20 book comes into effect. Specifically with the feats is where this book is most important um, in terms of just being a player, because this is one that's lined out here. So, simple weapon proficiency. See, it's right there. You're proficient with clubs, knives, etc. And you can go into more detail by scrolling through it. It's uh, alphabetical. So, simple weapons proficiency. You can make attack rolls with simple weapons. A character without the feat would take a minus four penalty for making those weapons or for making attacks with those weapons. And that is also what exactly classifies as a simple weapon. There is a place in both of the books that will cover these in the equipment. Uh, so we'll go under whip, uh, weapons. That's all ranged weaponry here for modern D20. Lots of guns. Splash weapons. There it is. Uh, exotic weapons, simple weapons, and you can see there's a list there. It's kind of hard to read on this screen, sorry about that. Um, but you can see there's brass knuckles, cleaver, club, knife, metal baton, pistol whip, rifle butt, sap, stun gun, tonfa, or in Naruto, you can see it by going to chapter 7. Scrolling down to weaponry, which is towards the end of the chapter. And here it is at the very bottom, and these are the weapons that are just specific to Naruto. Um, so your DM might, of course, allow you... Uh, you'll notice I go back and forth between seeing DM and GM, sorry about that. Um, they will typically allow you to do both of these. Um, if you have a knife, they will be fine with that doubling under simple weapons, if that option actually comes up. But most of the time for Naruto, you'll use a kunai instead. But should it ever be, you know, should it ever come up, now you're aware. Um, but you see there are only two weapons that actually matters in terms of just Naruto. So, back to our race here. Now that's our bonus feat, Elemental Affinity. You get to choose any. So, Naruto, his Elemental Affinity is Wind. So you can put it right down there. And that determines what element of a uh, Jutsu you can use starting off. As you level up, you will get more, and they will be known as secondary uh, elements. And those allow you to learn other types, but there is a bonus to your affinity. You have an easier time rolling learn checks with those. So, choose that carefully. It's very good early on for determining what skills you want to do. You might want to look at the uh, ninjutsu that you can learn early on for that fact. Uh, or before, for determining that. <coughs> And now, 
There is language skills, allows you to read or write common or local language, and so nothing special with that one. Um, if you're following typical Naruto rules, that's really not going to matter, but should your DM want you to actually keep track of it, for example, human fire here, you see for your language, you can speak fire. Then you could put, there's common and fire. And you put read, write, bam, bam. And other languages, any. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, other languages, that's pretty much up to your DM to determine what they want to do for that. If they follow typical Naruto rules like I am a fan of, uh, obviously, language won't come into play. Everyone speaks uh, English or Japanese at the very least. So... It's really up to your DM's choice to double check with them. They might be more of a stickler because language can add some fun concepts into the DND. Alright, but now let's go back up here. Next, we will choose our starting class. Now, in Chapter 3, that's where this is all listed your basic classes. You see, you have six available you have Strong Hero, Fast Hero. Tough hero. Let's just scroll this way. And I skipped it. Smart hero. Dedicated hero. And charismatic hero. These are essentially the heroes that specialize in those earlier ability scores. And you can figure out which are which. Obviously, strong, that's strength. Fast, dexterous. So for Naruto, as we have emphasized, he is constitution based. He is a very tanky character. He is very strong. We will choose Tough Hero. So here in class, you'll scroll down to Tough Hero. And this is very difficult to read for uh, me having this on the side there. But it is... There it is. And level 1. So now our total class level at this point is level 1. You'll get all the bonuses that are listed here under Tough Hero. Now, there is a little description of each of them under their title, of course, if you are looking for more explanation. Um, typically, a tough hero is a hand-to-hand -hand fighter, and they're more about taking a hit than they are about actually dealing damage. That doesn't mean, of course, you can't specialize yourself in strength. You have freedom. But the benefit, the biggest benefit, is they are the only character that starts off with 1d10 hit points. And that's the first thing we're going to do. So we'll pop on over here back to roll d20. We'll roll 1d10. Not a great roll. And, but that is what health you would get for a level up. It would be 3 plus your constitution modifier. Now it is a little bit different here being our first level. You get the maximum hit check, or the maximum roll for that plus your constitution. So for our first level it is 10 plus our constitution score, which is 4, equaling 14. So next up, we have action points. As right here, lists exactly how many action points you get. Five plus one half your character level rounded down. So rounded down, one, that would be zero. Or half of one is one half. Yeah, 0.5 rounded down is zero. So starting action points, five. Now this is the more tedious part of it. You get all of these class skills to check off. So that's... Climb, Concentration, Craft, and you'd copy that into this Craft check, Mechanical, and you could divide it up into these two of them there. You will need to make, uh, make notes to separate them as appropriate, so that's based on how you want to do that, um, or what your DM decides. If they're like me, they'll just lump all Crafts into a single check, they won't make you upgrade skills separately for it. But there is a purpose to it if they choose to do it that way. Um, drive. Intimidate. Knowledge. You'll do the same thing here. Um, except this time I am just going to copy it all into one because I don't want to do that. So I'll just do that. Copy. 
paste. Uh, ninjutsu. Profession. Read write language. None. Ride. Speak language. None. Spot. Survival. And Taijutsu. Now for your skill points. You will gain 3 plus your intelligence modifier times 4 at level 1. And for every level after level 1, it will be 3 plus your intelligence modifier. Sorry, that was some lightning there. So at level 1, that means we will gain, and I'll keep track of this the way I do it, in this same little note bubble, 3 plus my intelligence modifier, which, whereas it's negative 1, it does have a minimum of 0, so it would be 3 plus 0 times 4, equaling, of course, 12. Now I'll just make the note. Level 1. Level 1. Tough hero. And so as a result, I now have a total, and I'll keep track of that right here as well, of 16. And so there's 16. And I'll put points into my skills uh, later. The reason for checking that out, for checking the class skills, is because everyone that isn't a class skill takes two ranks to up into one point. So if I wanted to upgrade Naruto's balance to one rank, that would take me two points to do it. Whereas if I just wanted to upgrade his climb, then it would take me one point, because that is a class skill. So now we move on to your level bonuses based to your stats. So we are what a uh, first level tough hero. That means we have zero bonus to our base attack, one bonus to our fortitude save, zero to our reflex save, and zero to our will save, and then one to our defense. So as a result, the only thing that we actually got from that was one to our fortitude save and one to our defense. But there is also this special, which is a talent that we get. And we'll get to that one here. There's the talent that we get, and we'll get to that one here in just a moment. First, our starting feats. Now, in addition to the two feats that everyone gets at the first level, so that's worth noting, and I always do that with just at the very bottom, plus two, just to remind me that I still have that waiting. A tough hero also begins with the simple weapons proficiency feat. Now, we already have that from our, uh, from our race. You could always ask your GM if you are allowed to take another one in place of that, typically it will be a no. Just because everything, every class will get simple weapons proficiency almost. Uh, now the optional rule, and this is up to your GM, uh, tough heroes may begin with proficiency in light, medium, and heavy armor. Taking this class after level 1 grants no armor proficiency. So that is, you'll need to double check with your GM. That determines what equipment you get for determining bonuses to your defense through equipment. Um, we'll get to that a little bit more later. Typically, in my case, um, I haven't done the optional rule for armor proficiency. But that's also because in Naruto, none of my, none of my players at any point throughout the campaign did anything that was above light armor. So I just pretty much gave everyone light armor proficiency and called it good. All right, so now we get back to that talent that was mentioned earlier. You see here at first, third, seventh, first, left. At every odd level, you get a talent. Um, and you get to choose from these trees. Now, a damage reduction tree, which just means you take one point less from damage from both melee and ranged. Um, stamina, which increases your chakra pool. Or you can suppress your chakra and, hide, and use it to hide from any uh, prying eyes that might be sensing you using sense chakra uh, energy resist allows you to ignore points of acid damage cold damage earth damage electricity fire sonic water and wind or unbreakable gives you the chance to remain conscious robust uh, be ro uh, rem rah, 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 rah. gives you the chance to remain conscious which allows you to of course when you would be dying you don't immediately fall unconscious you can keep fighting 
It is very risky to do that, um, but it can pay off depending on how brutal of a DM you're, uh, you're dealing with. Uh, robust means that you just gain bonus hit points. Second wind means you can spend an action point and you gain a number of hit points back. Stamina, you gain uh, or you recover twice as fast. And second chance, where you can spend an action point um, and you will pretty much get a short rest benefit. Now, for the sake of Naruto, he is... He's a fighter, you know? And I don't just mean that as, like, you know, punch-punch. He will also do everything in his power to remain conscious. So that's what, we're, what we are going to choose for that talent. So I'm just going to copy that there, paste it here. And if you would prefer, you can always copy that down. Copy whatever you need to add into the details there. I would do that once again by using a sticky note. But for the sake of this, I don't need to. I know exactly what this does off the top of my head. It's one that was common enough throughout the D&D, one that I use both for NPCs and for players alike. So, yeah. Not going to take any notes for that. And so that is the end of making level 1 for your class. So, let's hop back up to... 39 here. Next up is our hit points. Now that was determined by our class. So I kind of did that a little bit early. I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, now here it says, is always determined by what class you take. At the first level, you get the maximum hit points from the hit die, but each subsequent level must be rolled. That's what we've covered. That's why, even though I rolled the 3, went with the 10 plus the 4. But if we leveled up, then, and let's say we rolled that 3 again, then we would get 3 plus 4, so that'd be 7, making our total 21. We'll get into level ups here a little bit later. Now, chakra and reserves. Character's chakra pool is equal to 2 per level. So level 1, that is 2, plus your constitution modifier, which would make that 6, because 2 plus 4. Um, your chakra reserves are equal to 2 per level, and has no modifier, so that would just be 2. There are also other ways to, of course, gain chakra. That's through feats, abilities, classes. Nothing that really applies right now. So next, you will create an occupation. Now your occupations are listed. Where are they? Chapter 4. These will come into play very much or very little, depending on your GM. This, this pretty much determines what your job was in life. What were you doing when the campaign started? Were you an academy student? That's the, that's the common one that I had everyone in mind do. That, I imagine, will be a very common one for what you're trying to do in most cases. Maybe you're mentored. Maybe you're Naruto. He's, you know, mentored under Jiraiya. Granted, he was also an academy student. Uh, maybe you're ninja law enforcement. Have to be a little bit older for that one but you are more specialized. Better pay, potentially better bonuses, you're more talented. Uh, ninja technician, samurai, seal expert, wandering ninja. And there are also some that are based on your clan. If you're coming from some of the notable clans, such as, let's say, right here, the Aburame clan, they are the bug clan. As a result, you can take their clan as an occupation, and they have their own bonuses. You'll see that, you know, Dotomaru, is that Datomaru, uh, Fujiwara, Hyuga, Ishimaru, Kagatsuki, Kaguya, Mibu, Uchiha, Yachomaru, and of course, if your GM allows it, you might choose a different one that's not listed here and just go off of one of their one of their uh, predetermined lists. Of course. It, uh, ignoring certain advanced bloodline features, such as the Dokagon. So for the sake of Naruto, we're gonna, you know, this is Naruto when he's pretty young. You know, he's, well, how old was he out of the academy? I don't remember. We're gonna say he was age 10. Let's fill in this while we're here. I don't remember how hot, how tall he is, so I'm just gonna say he's four foot at this point. Uh, weight, I uh, know, he's a scrawny little spitfire. Uh, we'll do 80, eyes, blue, hair, blonde, skin, white, arguably. <laughs> so that's out of the way. He is an academy student. We'll add that in. 
Academy student. Now, what you get here are some skills. You get to choose out of this list of class skills and choose three of them. Now, if you were choosing one that is already on your class skill from being with your class, then you'll get plus one in the miscellaneous mod to your checks. Now, let's take a look here. Balance. Naruto doesn't really learn balance until later on, so we're not going to worry about that. Bluff. Mm, that could be useful. Climb. He's already got that. Chakra control. Not that good at it. Not that good. Concentration. Craft. Disable device. Disguise. Escape artist. Fuinjutsu. Gather information. Genjutsu. Hide. Investigate. Jump. Knowledge. Move silently, oh sorry, listen, move silently, ninjutsu, search, sleight of hand, spot, survival, taijutsu, or tumble. All of these, you know, make sense for Naruto, but I think a few stand out for him. So jump, you know, first thing you see him do in the show is he's jumping up from rooftop to rooftop. I think it makes sense for him to have jump, you know. I think that's pretty straightforward. He's a troublemaker. He likes to bluff. Oh no, I didn't paint those those Hokage faces. <laughs> Uh, and he's also pretty nimble for uh, for being a spry little or for being a little kid. So tumble. And he also gets to choose one of the feats that are listed here. So that is archaic weapon proficiency, which that is pretty much classic swords for the most part. But all of those are once again lined out under melee weapons. As you can see, this is just the example from modern D20: bayonet, hatchet, longsword, machete, rapier, spear. And Naruto will have its own list. We'll take a look at those here in just a second. Um, there is Brawl, Combat Martial Arts, Defensive Martial Arts, Genin, Genjutsu Adept, Nin Weapons pr uh, Proficiency, Ninjutsu Adept, and Taijutsu Adept. Let's take a look. Archaic Weapon Proficiency or Nin Weapons Proficiency could be useful for Naruto. Let's just take a look at that to double check. Scrolling down to the weapons again, because I, uh, believe it or not, do not have all these pages memorized. Uh, archaic, so that's battle axe, dagger, full blade, great bow, great sword, katana, short sword, and so on. Or ninja weapons proficiency, which that would be things such as kunai, shuriken, throwing knives, throwing needles, battle wire, blowgun, fuma shuriken. I think it makes sense for Naruto to have Nin Weapons proficiency. He's not great with them, but he's also, yeah, he uses them every now and then. So we'll just add that. Keep it simple. Get those easy ones out of the way so he never has to worry about using them. And back to the occupations. The last thing we get from it is a bonus to our wealth. Now, wealth is an interesting thing in this game. It's based on the modern D20 system, which treats it like a credit card. Now, depending on your DM, that might be preferable. Keep it simple. Pretty much you roll based on your wealth check, and it determines whether or not you can afford something. But it also... I don't know. I, I like being able to actually raise your gold, raise your balance, raise your money, and worry about it from there. Um, so they do have a chart towards the end of this book. Let's see if I can... So here it is, on page 1095. Zoom in there. This is the chart that I go after. That compares all of the purchase prices to a real equivalent. Now the issue with this is every number gets incrementally higher. So if you're ever dealing with something that's like, oh yeah, I just, you know, number 10 is... 1,200, but number 20 is 20,000. But it does also make sense for it to go that high for certain cases. The GM will really have to make the call as to what system you're following by. The credit system can be valuable because it makes things a little bit simpler. You don't have to keep track of money, but it would still be... I, I think it ruins the spirit of money. So that's why I recommend the Rio, but I can understand if you don't want to. So back to creating our character. We are now done with the occupation. 
So action points, we've already done this, all basic class offers the 5 plus half of a level rounded down. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that. Now skills and feats. Choosing skills and feats can determine what advanced and prestige classes, techniques, and later feats are available to you. Character gains skill points every level, times 4 at the first level, depending on what class they take, and what feat and one feat at first level, plus any bonus his class or occupation may grant. So, as a result, that plus 2 that we had earlier now becomes a plus 3. And we'll get into that here in just a moment. Let's first take care of skills. I've gotten a little bit into skills and upgrading them, and how it works for ranks. But, now let's actually spend them. Now, Naruto, when he's young, he puts a lot of points in just his innate climbing ability. We'll just throw a couple of points in there. Throw a couple of points into dodge. Let's see what else. He's still, you know, we're working, looking at him as though he's kind of in the academy at this moment. So we're not going to worry too much about ninjutsu. We'll give him, you know, like, one point. You know, very basic. Very basic. And I'm just going to go little by little for this. Survival, he knows how to survive. I'd like to see you survive on that diet of ramen for the years that he does. Uh, taijutsu, that's definitely more where he shines. And put the final four points here into tumble. And now, as you can see right here is where it's keeping track of it. 16 out of 16. And that covers the 12 that we got for being a tough hero and the 4 that we got for being a human. Now, feats, you get three, currently, is what we're at, based on our race and based on our, uh, or based on just being a level one character. So, we will go to the feats chapter. Chapter six. Fair warning, there's a lot in here. There is a lot in here. Now, there is one special detail that Naruto will have. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. <clears throat> so here you can see on page 101 of the base book, or of the Naruto book, we have all the feats listed out. And all of them, a considerable number of them, have prerequisites. Now, Advanced Bloodline can only be taken at the first level. A lot of these have more unique ones. But just keep in mind, and do not forget this, the, Nar or the uh, modern D20 book also has a considerable number of feats. And a lot of the feats that you will create, or that you will need to get for classes, are also listed in this book. And they are not listed in the Naruto book. Now that would be, let's say, Brawl. That was one of the bonus feats that was listed earlier that we had a chance of choosing. Plus one on hit checks to unarmed attacks. You roll 1d6 as opposed to a 1d4. And then you also apply your strength bonus as non-lethal damage. That makes sense for Naruto. That's a possible option. Another good one to go starting out if you're going for uh, straight up melee combat, com combat martial arts. Um, this one does require, and this one we can't get right now, because it, see, it, it takes a base attack bonus of one, which we have zero. Now I'm just going to choose three kind of quickly at random here. I'm not going to look too much into the Naruto ones, we're just going to choose a few. <coughs> of course, all of these have their own details. It's It can take some time sifting through them all, figuring out what works best for you. And especially if you're trying to plan ahead, which I do recommend you do. And so, especially with Naruto, because the Naruto feats don't actually offer that much in terms of more melee combat, um, at least early on, it requires more prerequisites than we, or that Naruto has at level 1, we are instead just going to be using the ones out of Modern D20. And I'm just going to grab a few quick ones that would make sense for his character, not strictly going into what I think you would have, that, you know, trying to keep to the canon as much as possible right now. So I'm just going to add Brawl, you know, better non-lethal damage. We're going to use some defensive martial arts. Gives him a bonus against melee, which, you know, he's always a fan of that melee combat. And let's go down here. Heroic Surge is always a fun one. Pretty much it gives you a free move or attack action um, that refreshes per, uh, per day. And of course, you can look at the full description of it down below here.
There it is. So you, can take, uh, you can take an extra move or attack action once per round, either before or after regular actions. You may use Heroic Surge a number of times per day, depending on the character level. So, first level, we can only use it one extra time per day, but that can be a very life-saving ability. And that takes care of the bonus three feats that we had. So, back to character creation. Wealth. Wealth can either be very important or very useless. In my D&D, I made it very worthless, but I'll still go over it. To determine your wealth, you roll 2d4. Wow, five. Add it to the one that we had earlier, that makes it six. And wealth can be useful for the credit system, or otherwise I used it as kind of a, a reference point to determine how much money people would find in treasure chests or get rewards out of certain things that we did. Um, it's much more up to the DM and exactly to determine exactly how much you want that to matter. So then for starting equipment. That is all listed here in Chapter 7. Now this will determine general equipment. Scrolls, primarily useful for Fu and Jutsu, um, or these specific ones which have their own unique fun fact, not fun facts about them. Um, belt pouches, things for helping you carry more than you can actually carry, your preservation container, you know, just simple things like that to keep things carry water. Preservation container is essentially a water bottle or it can be used to store uh, ninja tools. And pretty much the way that the the credit system would work, from my limited understanding admittedly because I really didn't like it, you'd be able to afford anything that would be under that, that'd be that six or under to start off with. So you could get a travel cloak, the conical hat, or the DM would just say, you have this much Rio go wild following that chart that was on page uh, that was on the page from earlier. And of course there are other details here. Accessories, services, go down a little bit further. We have weaponry. So of course for Naruto he doesn't have that much, you know, to him. He's got so we had that pocket, we'll add that he has his pocket on his on his uh, back and on his uh, leg. Uh, he has a few kunai. We'll just add a few of those in. Five kunai, five shuriken. He doesn't have much, you know, early on. He actually doesn't have much uh, at any point in his life. And then we get down to drugs. This is things that cover from Akamichi food pills, more potion style brewing, the black weed elixir, um, Chakra enhancing drugs, these pretty much, or sorry, these ones here are ability enhancing drugs that just boost your base uh, ability score. Uh, those can be given out very rarely. You typically won't see many of those. Um, that's some of those. And then, of course, armor. So let's just go with that real quick. We're just going to treat everything as a reinforced suit for Naruto. Because he really has his basic clothes, so, you know, reinforced, I think that makes sense. So we're just, we're just going to add that to him. Reinforced suit, equipment bonus, plus one. It's type. Impromptu. Uh, armor bonus was that plus one. Non-proficiency bonus, plus zero. So that means if you weren't proficient in light armor, you would get plus zero from it. Um, the maximum dexterity you can have is plus 7, so if Naruto ever exceeded a dexterity bonus of 7, he would no longer get a defense boost from this armor. Um, there is no penalty from it. Um, keeps you at your base speed of 30. Uh, weight cost, or it is 10 pounds. <clears throat> speed can be 30. Size, light. Oh, sorry, sorry, not light. Size, medium. Max dex plus seven. Special properties, uh, none. And of course, there's the more detail aspect. Padded armor can be made to resemble any type of clothing. Um, you can also have it resemble other details at the cost of higher cost. <clears throat> and 
And you'll also see this up here has been uh, has changed to reflect that if you're using the automatic PDF. Otherwise, you'll need to mark it up there as well. So our defense is now increased from all that. Um, and of course, we need to add the weight bonus for the pocket and the kunai and the shuriken. There's two, one, There's that pocket belt pouch. What was I thinking? I was, I've been playing a game recently. I played Dark Cloud recently. You know, that was on my mind. Uh, it's what will be listed above. But as you can see, this allows you to carry up to 10 pounds of material and has three compartments. Just allows you to help keep uh, track of everything. So Naruto would have all of his kunai and shuriken in there. Um, and typically, depending on your GM, they might require you to have these pockets to make sense to pretty much limit you on what you're taking out per mission. But the belt pouch itself weighed. Uh, yeah, he's just got a small one. One. So now his total weight carried is four from his gear, plus the ten from the uh, prompto suit, making his total weight carried fourteen. And how much you can carry, uh, we'll get into that here in a little bit later, going to the more technical rules. But before we go to that, let's go back up here to character creation. Finally, techniques. Now, a character at first level begins with 1d4 plus 1 technique. Now, techniques start on page 250 here. This gives you all the technical details you need to know about them here in this area, or if you're just looking to choose through a few, go to page 716 at the very bottom. That's the index of all the ninjutsu. So at level 1 for Naruto, we get 1d4 plus, whoops, not 1d4, 4d4, plus 1. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Starting out with a solid 2 jutsu. Uh, but it makes sense for Naruto, so you know what? I won't complain. Uh, flying monkey technique is always a fun one. And what I do, you know, just copy, paste it up here, search the previous, make sure I'm looking at the right one here, had to click it one extra time. <coughs> and you can see right there, it's a rank one, so you can only learn rank one at level one unless you have a the genius shinobi feat. Um, learn DC 13, learn DC, that's a whole thing. Not going to cover that in this video. Uh, perform requirements, one rank requires one rank in ninjutsu. Um, otherwise, you'd have to roll that DC of 12. Um, the time, it costs one move action to do it. Components, C and H, that's described above. That's hand seals. Uh, C is concentration. Uh, range, just on you. Target is you. Duration is instant. Uh, the saving throw, none, and it costs one chakra. As you use this technique, you're whipped upward by a sudden draft, and you seem to be riding the wind. Pretty much you make a jump check with a plus 10 bonus. And you'll keep track of your techniques here, so we'll just do. And you can always copy whatever you prefer. Flying monkey technique. And then I go back to where we were. And remember, that was under futon. Futon means wind jutsu, and we can only learn that one because our affinity is wind. Otherwise, we'd be stuck with the base ninjutsu, or taijutsu, or everything else that's listed here that isn't under medical or an element. Um, and I'm not going to worry about the second one right now. Just because there's so much to look through. Techniques are definitely one of the most time consuming aspects of character creation, especially depending on how many you get per level. Typically you'll get one per level, but that's up to your GM. They might have you do two a level like I did, but even that can get... Ooh, it, it can get out of hand. You only have so much space here, keep that in mind. 
But that is pretty much it for base character creation as is lined out here. There are a few other details that you can do. Um, let's cover first off a true ninja. This is for more up to your GM whether or not they want you to be a true ninja. <clears throat> so a true ninja is essentially you just start as someone who is destined for greatness. You know, you're a protagonist, essentially. Uh, Naruto, of course, he is a true ninja. As a result, instead of buying with the 36 points, you would buy with 40. So we'd get four more points that we could spend right now. Um, you'd roll 5d6, taking the three best rolls and re-rolling ones. Um, you have at least one power unit, which that's covered right above this. Be able to learn techniques in half the time. Be able to move up to five times your normal speed. Count as armed and lethal without the combat martial arts feat. Um, begin play with the three basic techniques, which is Bunshin, which is uh, clone, Kawarimi, which is substitute, um, oh, and Henge, which is uh, transformation. And then you would also get 2d4 plus one technique per level. That honestly, 2d4 plus one, that's just nonsense. Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. It's crazy. <laughs> Two per level tends to be enough. You think at low levels, like, what am I going to do? There's so many that I want. It levels out. Um, if you're, you know, depending on the GM, they might have you do a little bit more. A few more is fine, but you start, once you start doing like five per level, it's just, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> so you get some free class uh, skills that are listed right there, and you can also recover chakra twice as fast. As it has a little note here, this is the legal way to create truly powerful characters. Um, and the power units, they give you bonus to defense, hit points, learn checks, chakra, attack rolls, saving throws, initiative, movement speed, and bonuses to certain ability scores. Um, I did, in my campaign, give everybody one power unit. Um, and I think it's a good way to separate the characters. It makes them feel a little bit more powerful. But it's still far from perfect. There, there's definitely a balancing issue that can uh, occur from that. But now let's go into just some of the more minute details. Right here, you'd keep track of your weapons. Of course, you'd add a kunai. That would be 1d4 for your damage. Total attack bonus would be 3, because that's a melee weapon if used as melee. Or if you're throwing it, it would be plus 0. Critical, it crits on a 20. Uh, range, just base range, 30, I think. I actually, I had to double check that one. Follow the other stats as appropriate. Reputation, that's more determined by the GM than anything else. <clears throat> Experience points you'd keep track of here. That would be a good thing to cover. Experience points, if I recall. Page, oh, no, not 17. 18? There it is, 18. So that right there, as you can see, is the experience chart. So at 20th level, you'd have 190,000 experience. To get to level 2, you need a 1,000. Um, then we have your carry capacity. Don't actually remember where this one is, so just referring to the index here of the modern D20 book. Let's see. Carrying capacity, page 121. And carrying capacity is determined by your strength. I just don't remember the numbers. So for Naruto, his strength is 16. So we'll be following that. So that is a light load of 0 to 76. A medium load of 77 to 153. A heavy load of 154 to 230. Um, for lifting over your head, that's all a little bit under here. You can lift up to your maximum load over your head, so that would be 230. For lifting off the ground, uh, that would be double for 460. And for pushing or dragging, uh, it would be five times your maximum load. So that would be maximum load 230, five times that, that would be 1,150, if my math is correct, which I believe it is. So you can see that number can get pretty crazy pretty fast. I don't know quite how that makes sense in terms of uh, regular modern D20, 
but in terms of Naruto, I think it makes perfect sense, so I really don't worry about that. Um, allegiances, that's more for role-playing, or your GM might request you to do that as well. Special abilities, that is more where you list special things from your class, such as um, talent or class abilities that aren't talents. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. There's talents, yeah, ignore that. So special abilities, that's, a, that's an aspect we could cover. So Naruto, as we all know, is the nine-tailed fox. And if you didn't know, uh, spoiler for episode one. So ghastly inheritance is what I'm searching right now to get to the right page. So the demonic subtype is what this is uh, right below. <laughs> that. So the QB, the nine-tailed fox, blah, blah, blah. This is pretty much saying that you are someone who is a Jinchuriki. And you get bonus abilities from that. That is where special abilities like this would go. This is essentially like a bloodline, but doesn't actually require the bloodline feat for this one. <coughs> As you can see, it has its own base changes. Bonuses to your hit dice, bonuses to your constitution, bonuses to saves and reflex, uh, or to fortitude and reflex saves, bonus checks, or uh, sorry, penalties to your skills, bonus feats, special qualities. And you would add things such as the special qualities into your special abilities over here. It does have a level adjustment of plus 3, meaning you would hit, at this point, maximum level of 17 as opposed to 20. And the challenge rating is um, not something I ever concern myself with. It pretty much just makes it that you get experience at a lower rate. Um, if you watch the Naruto D&D, I had that Silas do that for a while, and then I just said I don't care enough to keep following that. Um... But who knows? Worth keeping in mind. And of course, this one has the special abilities such as being able to get a ton of bonuses with Blazing Rage. That's essentially, think that is like, you know, the Nine Tails cloak in its base form, like when he was fighting Naruto versus, or when it was Naruto versus Sasuke fighting on the, uh, in the final valley. Think of it like that. Overwhelming Chakra. That is kind of. That's more when he taps into the Ninetales Chakra for summoning the uh, Toad Sage, or for some, or not the Toad Sage, for summoning the, uh, for Chief Toad, or for summon, or for when he was fighting uh, Neji in the Chunin exams. Greater health, that's bonuses to that. QB Manifestation. Um, so the QB manifestation, the way I view that one is that's like the third, the three tails form. Maybe it was four tails, I don't remember. Um, but it's kind of in Naruto Shippuden when uh, Naruto is fighting Orochimaru and he gets the full cloak and he's just completely blind to his allies. That's what I always view that one as. Um, mainly because of... There it is. Uh, because of this line, while in QB Frenzy, the host cannot stop himself from killing a foe or attacking friends. Um, so that can make some interesting aspects. If you're doing anything with uh, Jinchurkis, I just go off of that, and then I also made some custom rules for the higher tiers for them, just following this same template that's listed right here, um, as well as following the template for Blazing Rage and uh, QB Manifestation, and I just bumped the bonuses up accordingly. So for the Nine Tails, in its maximum form, I essentially it would have been plus uh it would have been plus 20 strength and constitution and yeah you know, incredibly disgusting overpowered amounts but it is because it is disgustingly overpowered that's what it would be it makes sense um of course this is a dangerous thing to give someone so use it at your own discretion so that is the absolute basis of character creation for naruto d20 um let me just pull up uh, another sheet here, just to show you what a character that's at level 30 can be. So this I'm showing you whether or not I should. Let me actually double check to see whether or not there's anything I should keep off of this. This is a special page that I made specifically for Awari. Um, as you can see, he is level 30. He is an epic character. Follows the epic rules that are listed in the book. Um, and as a result, his stats are incredibly higher. Um, the ability scores are modified based through leveling up, 
based on uh, certain other modifiers he has, such as his bloodline. And so those actually all even out to what they should be for everything that he has. Um, this doesn't include bonuses from being a tailed beast or from having the Thunder God. So this is kind of, you know, dumbed down from what he actually is in the book. Um, at his most powerful, here's a fun little fact for you. Me giving him as much bullshit as I could. That, like, and bullshit isn't like everything that's listed in the book. But the things that you should not give this many things to one character. His defense actually hits 75 at one point. Um, when he's got everything active and going. So that's a testament to just how brutally overpowered some of the abilities can be. Such as the bloodline. Such as the speed and strength rank. Such as the tailed beast. Um, enlightened characters, it can it can get out of hand very quickly. <clears throat> but this gives you more of an idea of what a high-level character is capable of, what their sheet would more look like. Um, and even this, like I said, exceeds the level 20, so this is much, much higher. Let's scroll down here. Here's a fun little uh, few items. Let's see, scroll up. I just gotta make sure I'm not doing anything here that's uh, spoiler-worthy. Uh, you can see Ken's ruby ring. Of course, I have to give that to him. He's got a bunch of little things. A lockpick set. Jonian license. Shiro's fake ID. Two million Rio. Giba swords. Baronsu blade. Gas mask. Dome scatter. Scrolls just for kunai for specific variants of what thing of uh, things he does. The armor of Raijin. The Shibuki blade. <clears throat> Although I guess he gave that to uh, he gave that away at this point, didn't he? That doesn't matter. I don't need to edit this. You can see all of his feats are listed here. Incredibly, you know, tons and tons and tons of stuff. This right here is more what I meant to pull up from this. Uh, so this is the Nobby, you know, Seven Tails mode. Um, so I put gains demonic subtype, type plus 30 hit points, plus 2 constitution. Um, and 30 hit points, that's one level, so that's why it's 30. So that, that's literally what is there listed in the book. But then when we go into Nanabi's Embrace... Oh, oops, I put Nanabi. It's supposed to be Nanabi. Um, that's what I have there. So that's pretty much like full Seven Tails mode, what it would have been. Um, I can see it right there. It's just the Three Tail mode, Nanabi manif Manifestation, or Kibi Manifestation, just increased. Um, and there it is, Tailed Beast mode. That's the absolute most powerful one. And so there are a few of these details that I will, uh, that are kind of hidden away. I've hidden a lot of his techniques away just in case I ever showed this. Um, there are a few of those that I didn't want to show off. Um, but that right there is a basic look at what he has. And pretty much those three right there, or sorry, a f no, no. A few of these that are listed are completely custom. Um, I had a few that were on there that, uh, I've taken off because I don't want to show those off because it's a little too overpowered. But uh, yeah, it gets it can be pretty crazy. That's just to give you a taste of what a high level character has the possibility of being. And keep in mind, Awari was my uh, <laughs> he was my baby. Um, you all notice a couple of different additions I did make to this. These are things that Mike added because we made some special uh, modifications to the character sheet that aren't going to be listed on yours. Um, such as the ability, let's just type it in there. Ability scores can go to 40 and properly calculate as opposed to what they would have done. Um, you will see there are also some issues with the modified character sheet as his ability modifier for Fortitude is 8, even though it's only 4. Hence the minus a ton. Um, and I, you can also see I've balanced it to an extent, or his character. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much a simplified version of what he is at the end of the campaigns. Um, you can make your predictions of whatever you want in the comments, uh, <laughs> but there is no spoilers that are listed on this sheet. So leveling up. All right, so now when you level up your character, there are a few things to keep in mind. Now let's go back here down to Tough Hero. So first and foremost, you'll get the 1d10. We rolled the 3 earlier, I'm just going to go for that. So that's 3 plus 4, that's the 21. Uh, chakra goes up, so that would be plus 2, plus 4. You know, 2 for the level, 4 for the constitution. So that is a total of 12 now. That goes up 2 per level, so that's now 4 for the, uh, for the reserves. 
Um, action points will go up, so it's now level two. So that means two, in a, uh, half of two is one. So five plus one, that's six. So that's eleven now. Uh, class skills don't get any more of those. That's just a one-time bonus. But now you get a bonus three, or in our case, four from being level two. So that would just be three class plus one race <clears throat> equals four level two. And that makes the total 20. And then you'd add those care those uh, ranks as necessary just to show off you know let's say we want to put two points in the balance but we don't have any of the ranks that would actually up that to 20 even though the listing there is only 18 it would be 20 because since it's not a class skill it costs two points for each rank um, now when you level up pretty much the first thing you'll do is choose what class you're going into I do highly recommend you go just upgrading the same class you have been doing, but it depends on what character you're creating. Sometimes you're not limited to how many classes you can have. Despite the five that are up here, you can go more than that. Um, so you do have some freedom in that choice. But keep in mind, some of the greater benefits for some of these are at the later levels. Um, you can, But taking new levels, especially, let's say, when you get to level three... Uh, when you choose your fourth level, typically you will have met prerequisites for a lot of the other classes, for the advanced classes. And that's when you would choose those. But for the sake of this, we're now just going to go to level two. Now this is incremental. So that is plus zero, plus one. That is not... If that was a one, that wouldn't be plus one. Now let's say, uh, here, let's let's treat this as third level for the sake of this. That's not plus one, plus two, as in plus three. That is now you are at plus two. So for this, of course, our base attack, sorry, let me highlight that properly. Our base attack now goes to one because we got one to it, but our fortitude save now goes from base to two, not three. It is only a total of two, not one plus two. So make sure you keep that in mind. So defense also goes up by one, and then we get a bonus feat at level two. And that is listed down below under the talents uh, right here. And we choose from a list. Alertness, athletic, confident, empowered resilience, endurance, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, for the sake of this, I'm just going to add uh, training, which allows him to learn training abilities um, without a penalty. Um, and that's all under your techniques. Now, that is pretty much it for leveling up following base rules. The other things that you get that are outside of your class is, first off, you have your ninjutsu. So you will, of course, roll depending on what your DM prefers. You might roll the 1d4 plus 1, might roll the 2d4 plus 1 if you're true heroes um, or true ninja. Or if you're just choosing two at a time, like I did, or like I had for ours, then you could go up to rank two and choose two from there, or you could go and choose them from rank one as well, or do, you know, one and one, whatever you prefer. I'm not going to choose those right now. Um, yeah, yeah, just not going to worry about it. But there are a few special things to keep in mind as you level up, a few special levels. Every third level, you get a bonus feat that can be chosen from anywhere. You don't have to choose from a list. Um, that feat is very important, and I recommend you use it for getting to certain advanced classes. You know, let's say... Let's go take a look at advanced classes here real quick. Chapter 9. Let's just say you want to be a beast master. So you would need a base attack bonus of plus 2. Now, at level 3, we get that plus 2 bonus. Um, skills, you need Handle Animal, 6 ranks, Survival, 3 ranks. If we specced into this early on, we could have met that by now. Um, and then you also need the Mojo Aisho feat. Um, but if you have all three of those, then at level 4, you'd be able to choose the Beastmaster class. And you could choose level 1 of that. So it is good to prepare early for situations like that. 
But if there's one of those feats that you need to get, such as, well, I think Mojo Aisho is actually level one only feat. Uh, but if there's a feat that you need to get that isn't, you know, has to be at level one where you choose this, now is a great time once you hit level three. And that is every three levels. So that's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and eighteen. <clears throat> at every fourth level, you will also get a free ability point. Now that means you can just up one of these flat out. So I recommend if you have any odd ones, you up them just to, you know, get that so where you're actually getting a efficient bonus. So level four, that would up 15 to 16, gets that to a plus three bonus, ups all of the skills that are appropriate for it. And depending on your bloodline, there might be certain uh, bonuses as well. Let's just go to... Oops, wrong one. That's a massive typo. Now, here are the bloodline listing for the Sharingan. And so you also get bonuses when you level up based on this list. Now, when you choose a bloodline, you have to put an actual level up into it. Uh, for one of your levels. That I'm not going to explain here. It can be a whole pain. Your DM might just completely ignore it um, because it is kind of confusing in the way it's listed here. But basically, depending on whether you choose minor, intermediate, or some of them have advanced, you would have to put a level into it based, you know, every certain levels. Um, or every, once, once every certain number of levels, otherwise you'll start taking a penalty to your experience. We're not going to worry about that here. We're just going to go into exactly what you would level up. So here, let's say you have an intermediate, you would get the Sharingenai plus one. And that right here, you get you can activate your Sharingan as an attack ability. So that means if you have it as an intermediate bloodline, you can pretty much have the Sharingan right off the bat, right at level two. Um, otherwise, if it's minor, it takes you a little bit longer. You have to be level three. And of course, intermediate has more bonuses with it, more that you'll level up as you go, but of course it means you also lose levels going into classes because you have to upgrade your bloodline. And that pretty much covers all the things you'll really need to worry about leveling up as you go. Um, it's just the class, the feats, the ability score. I think that's all. That's all that's popping into my head. Um, of course, don't forget your chakra. <clears throat> so yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, as I say, after this video is probably a, it's much longer than it should have been. Um, but I wanted to give you a more comprehensive guide for character creation. And of course, if you have questions, ask them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help um, whenever I can. Um, whether it be rules or ideas, whatever it is that you're looking for. Hopefully I uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got some insights into character creation, maybe a little bit of insight into Awari if you follow the actual D&D that we do. Um, regardless, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Like I said, I'll be doing a Ruby one here not too... Uh, I'll be doing a Ruby one here not too long from now, um, but I'm just working on finishing that book first. So thanks for watching again. Have a great rest of your day. See you next time. A special thank you to our patrons for going the extra mile for us. Thanks to you, we can start the process of making more content that we love for you to enjoy.